I come across um, a lot of entrepreneurs or wannabe entrepreneurs who have these brilliant ideas, um, but their main fear is that someone else will steal the idea and implement it. Anton, should entrepreneurs worry about that? And I think in my position as senior mentor at Fatola, it's probably the most common request I get as well, is people f approaching and saying, I've got an idea, how do I, t you know, how do I protect it? Yes. And I've got two schools of thought on that essentially. The first one is if your idea is that easy to copy, it probably isn't as original as you think it might be, number one. And number two, bearing in mind that usually, particularly on a product basis, I can change a color or an item, a tiny little element of the product, um, and then you know, I can skirt any copyright infringements or trademark infringements just by doing that. So yes. I suppose my overall feeling on that is usually we overplay that hand. We get very worried, we get very concerned that someone's going to come and steal our great idea from under us. And the truth is that ideas are a dime a dozen. It's whether you can implement them effectively that actually makes the difference between success and failure. Um, so you'll find that there's been thousands of entrepreneurs in, the, in years gone by who've had incredible ideas and they weren't able to turn those ideas into a viable product or service. Yes. Someone else came along, improved on it, and they're raking in all the cash. So the short answer would be don't obsess about protecting your IP, rather focus on building a brand, building a, a concept that's strong, that's viable, that's workable. And when it looks like the proof of concept is viable, yes. then you look at protection potentially. But to do it the other way around, unless you've got such a groundbreaking idea like a cure for cancer or you know a tree that grows money, yes. I would say that usually it's actually overkill to worry about and expensive let's not forget you know to get copyright protection to get intellectual property IP protection costs a lot of money it normally isn't just registered in one country it will be registered nationally as well as internationally and do you really want to go down that road again unless your idea is so revolutionary yeah. that you know protecting it is, is, is a viable strategy for the future this um, idea of protecting your IP, it's just, is, it, is it beyond just registering it at CIPRA, for example, which, which is why it requires a lot of money and you don't need to go through that route un unless your idea is really that groundbreaking? Correct. I mean, it, Just yeah. to break it down for, for, for people who may not know. Well, to, pr to truly protect a business concept or business idea requires proper legal support. You okay. would need to lodge that product. You would need to protect the name. You'd need to protect the concept. You'd need to protect the outcomes that the product delivers. It's not a simple process. It's not a cheap process. And often, you know, it's something that's done prior to us even proving if the product is viable or if anyone wants it. Um, so, yes, I would say the short answer would be, you know, rather, rather prove it first. Test the market, you know, don't be... If it's needed. Correct, and don't yeah. be so paranoid. You know, if I look at my example, I was one of the founders of a business that made wire art and beadwork and grew to a very large scale by formalizing that industry. But the reality is that we had a competitor on every street corner. Yes. And the moment that we launched a new product, within three days or four days, there it was, was being one. knocked off and yeah, being sold at, at flea markets and... On, so, you know, I could have done my, you know, twisted my head in knots trying to stop everyone copying my ideas or yes. our ideas or our designers' designs. Um, but the truth is we realized early on that there was a demographic that wanted an original Streetwise product, which was ours, and there was a demographic that wanted the cheap knockoff from the street. And this was our market, and that wasn't. And good luck to them. You know, by all means, if mm -hmm. you want a cheap, I would even recommend that you go to that guy on the corner because he's more reliable. Yes. Um, but we... And more cheaper. Correct. We realized that, that focusing on our brand 
was the best protection of our intellectual property. You cannot um, keep your idea to yourself if you want it to grow. So there's no way that you can keep in secret, keep it in secret, and then still expect it to grow and make you the billionaire that you dream of becoming. I feel that if, again, to go back to our original discussion is around if an idea is so revolutionary that that it's never been seen or done before, yes. um, it would be worthwhile to look at how can I protect this, how can I ensure that I get some time to get into market before I'm getting copied or people with deeper pockets come along and, 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 and make it roll it out before I have a chance to, uh, yes, for sure. But generally, just, you know, concept or, uh, you know, an improvement on an existing idea out there, whatever, I would rather say focus on spend your money on creating awareness, building a solid, powerful brand that people want to support and want to be associated with. Yes. Um, and and not stress out about getting copied or getting knocked off for N NDAs and all of these things, because the truth is that if people want to copy you bad enough, they will. And usually. And there's nothing you can do about correct, that. Correct, unless. And the only people who get rich in that scenario are the lawyers. So do you actually want to go into litigation because yeah. someone's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a guy at the moment who, who manufactures toilet paper, of all things. Very lucrative industry, by the okay. way. Um, and he's being threatened by his ex-partner because he, made, he did packaging that was probably about 15% similar to the, this guy's brand and his packaging. Okay. And he was all stressed out and worrying, what am I going to do? And he's threatening me. And, and I said, bring it on. Let him sue. Go back to him and say, it's absolutely fine if you want to sue me. First of all, he can never prove the case in court. And secondly, the legal fees will be 10 times what the potential benefit is for the guy who's litigious, who wants to do the suing. Yeah. And it's actually just a scenario of, you know, just get on with it. Build your brand. You know, create something compelling that people want instead of jealously trying to protect stuff that probably wasn't originally your idea in the first place anyway. So in other words, put all your energies, put all your money into this concept to make it work so that people can buy the concept, whether it be to the customers that you want to attract or the investors. Correct. I think for me, you know, the, the, the brand that you create is always your best insurance against copying, against cheap knockoffs, against others trying to steal your thunder. You build a brand that's compelling and you think about brands that have been around forever and a day. Ferrari, etc. you know, these luxury brands, these long-term brands. Yes. Um, they have a million and one competitors out there, but they still stand at the top of the herd because they're conscious that if I create something compelling that my customers value, that's the very best security and, and sustainable strategy that I can develop. And they'll keep coming back for it. Of course they will.